It's a new year, 2018 is here, hip hip hooray! And the Schlegetti is back in the saddle watching Monday Night Raw once again. Remember the key point, I have to own up to this, is that I watch so you don't have to. So we're getting back on the good foot and doing the nasty. Yes, we are. So, New Year, we feel like we're being refreshed. Take a little bit of time of not taking it so seriously. Hope it will come right in and, well, maybe not having my socks knocked off or my hair blown off. You well, clearly did. Hairline's still pretty good. 37 in March. Eat shit. And I was thinking, you know, maybe this will at least be a decent show, like the company had to air something live on New Year's Day. Um, maybe they would care. Uh, maybe they would try. Maybe they would succeed. And what it felt like we mostly got was kind of like a half-ass phoned-in effort. And... As much as I tried to be optimistic about it, as try, much as I tried and tried and tried to look at the positive on things, I was able to with a few things, but yeah, for the most part, this was boo-boo. Not the best way to really kick off 2018, start the road to Royal Rumble, which officially starts the road to WrestleMania. If this is the indication of what we've got coming over the next three months, buckle up, bitches, because it's going to be a bumpy boo-boo ride. And again, I had all types of plans and visions of grandeur. Oh, the Schleich did his back reviewing raw. Hip, hip, hoo, hey. Going to do all types of fun and crazy stuff. But ultimately, if the WWE only gives a half-ass effort, the Schleich Daddy should only have to give a half-ass effort in the raw review. I feel like that's fair. I feel like that is justified, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? You, 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 all of you. Fools! That's what you are. That's what you're getting. A half-ass Raw review. Let's make some magic happen. Or ten plus minutes of mediocrity still to come. Alright, let's go. What did I like on this show? Believe it or not, Jason Jordan. It felt like a big part of this was the Jason Jordan show. And I wasn't sure at this point in time that I would say something like that. That Jason Jordan was the highlight of Raw. But I really thought he was. You're starting to go there with him potentially turning heel. With Ambrose out of the picture, it looks like it might be him and Rollins at WrestleMania. So be it. Jason Jordan has big time potential, big time upside. He has a million dollar look. But he also has that kind of cross-eyed, funny looking, squinty face that makes you want to smack him and then smack his mama. Kurt's history probably did smack the mama. Anyways, kayfabe real, they're kind of blending together. What happened to the fourth wall here? But, the kind of obnoxious, jerkish, kind of full of himself, entitled Jason Jordan, I can get down with. The match with him, and wh which fucking member of the bar was it with? Was it Cesaro or Sheamus? Who knows, and who the hell cares? You know, even with Seth Rollins saying he's going to come out there and watch as Jason Jordan loses, Jason Jordan wins, then later on he goes up <laughs> to Roman and Seth backstage at a one point in time and says, you can believe that. <laughs> I'm like, he just did that better than Roman ever could have. Troll factor at least 75 here. But I thought Jason Jordan was good. I also thought Roman Reigns' interview backstage was pretty good. Short, sweet. He doesn't do words well, so choose the words better, limit them, and he can occasionally make something good happen. And that's what happened here. Obviously did not match up to Samoa Joe's interview with Renee Young, especially when he talked about he put Dean Ambrose on the sideline and now he's coasting off of his wife's paycheck. Ha 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 ha. Hopefully in that time, when Ambrose is getting healthy, he'll discover soap in the shower. No promises, no guarantees, we can only hope. And again, if you're expecting a lot more insight, it was a half-ass Raw, you're getting a half-ass Raw review. Bad! But Samoa Joe was outstanding. How much of that was written versus how much of that was off the cuff or giving him talking points. 
it was hard to tell, and that's what made it really good was that you could sit there and watch it, and you felt the intensity. It wasn't like total on shoot. You m worked in just enough things, but still managed to tell the story. I actually thought, up to the match itself, that they did a pretty good job of telling the story between Reigns and Joe for the IC title. Um, at one point in time, we got mini Ezekiel Jackson, as uh, Ross Gold Standard pointed out on Twitter, Apollo Crews taking on Bray Wyatt. Bathroom Bray, that's what we're going to call him. Good old reliable Bathroom Bray, because as long as he's on your television, you could be doing so many other things, up to and including dropping a deuce. And that's what I chose to do. Went and took a deuce, watched some college football on the phone, while dropping said deuce. Thank you, Bray, and my colon is very appreciative. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. Just bad, bu 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 bad. And Matt Hardy and his hundred faces and talking about fireflies turning into Woken, ah, who cares? Bray Wyatt gave me my bathroom break, and for that, I'm thankful. Uh, perhaps the most singularly awesome thing of the night was Braun Strowman during his match with Rhino going out grabbing a mic after he Slater gets on the apron and asks, uh, tells him he either can get off the apron or he can get in that ring and catch these hands. I mean, Braun Strowman just went into full-on sister mode. And believe me, if, I, if anybody knows the sisters, and I'm talking about catching some hands, it's the Schleg Daddy, okay? I am an expert in this area. Do not doubt me. Do not question it. So I geeked out. I marked the fuck out when he said to Heath Slater to come catch these hands. The man's got kids. The man's got kids. I'm just saying. But God, that was awesome. And with Braun Strowman, man, it was so fascinating throughout the course of 2017, where he went from being, in my eyes, uh, the roided up Uncle Ludo for some other people like Chase Oliver, talking about how he was nothing more than Care Bear to him. He became a big player to me, and he became a guy that needs to have that world title at some point in time in 2018, whether that's on Raw or SmackDown, I don't know. But he's legit over, at least to a certain degree, and at this point in time, what more can you really ask for? He was good again. And then everything else kind of happened. Alexa Bliss versus Asuka. Random thought, am I the only person that every time they see Asuka's name wants to say Oksana? Probably just this honky, but maybe it's not. And if I'm not alone, could you please let me know in the comments that you've maybe thought when you saw Asuka, you said Oksana? Just saying. Help a brother out here. Uh... What I don't get is, Alexa's the champ, right? Asuka's already in the Rumble. So, we put together this match. It's long, it's competitive. It doesn't allow either one of them to shine. There's old types of submission moves and rest holds. It was really damn boring. And then, to my understanding, I didn't even realize it initially, but later on, as I saw other people tweeting about it, and I didn't bother to research, because again, half-ass raw, I put in half-ass research for this show... Asuka now has a title shot against Alexa, so am I understanding that correctly? Is she going to get a title shot at the Rumble? What in the freaking hell is going on here? This match was long, this match was bad, it told no real story, and then you're tapping out Alexa. Like, that's just dumb. That's just stupid. This is the type of crap where nobody freaking gets over, and this is the type of crap that you look at and you say, okay, cool. They're doing 30 women for the Royal Rumble for the women, and they have to go over the top rope, as it should be. None of this half-ass 20 people, you know, you got to go through any of the ropes. If you're going to do it, and we want to be fair, then it needs to be equal across the board. That said, I can't, can't imagine how it could go bad where the majority of the women on your roster are barely eye level with the top rope, and now you're expecting all of them to go over the top rope. Nothing bad can happen here. But Alexa and Asuka, whoever structured this match, should go kick themselves in the sphincter. This sucked. <clears throat> Speaking of what else sucked, not necessarily Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. I guess that was fine. <clears throat> Just the fact that you've got Reigns with the IC title. And this is nothing more than filler for him until he gets to Brock. And everybody understands that and knows that at this point. So you really just kind of devalue the IC title because we all know it doesn't matter. And ultimately, it feels like they're going to get to the point where it's some Hogan Warrior crap, champion versus champion at WrestleMania. Yeet! 
But you put in all these different things about if this happens, if that happens, if Roman's counted out, if he's disqualified, he loses the title. Why wouldn't Jason Jordan come out here and interfere and cost Roman Reigns the belt? Maybe that's a little too fast of a burn for the heel turn, but fuck it. Why not? Because otherwise it's really dumb. You have Joe Loose for no real reason, and you had all this crap, and Super Reigns reigns supreme. And that's about it. I, 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 and if that wasn't enough... <laughs> so Enzo's not there, and... Nia Jax has to go run him chicken soup. <laughs> so Cedric Alexander <laughs> needs a partner. And you're wondering, <laughs> what the hell? Is, who's going to come out? What lame-ass cruiserweight is going to be? And it's Goldust! I hope this sticks! Sell them as 205 pounds. Make it a weight issue. I don't fucking know. <laughs> they sent Goldust out for freaking cruiserweight. <laughs> That's at the point of the show where you, they say to themselves, ah, a bunch of people are watching the college football playoff anyways. Frankly, we are in the gorilla position, so who gives a crap? Oh, you need somebody to tag partner for Cedric Alexander? It's Goldust. Oh, wait, that's a cruiserweight. Oh, fuck it, nobody's watching anyways. And you know what? You were probably right. <laughs> what a bunch of trash. And then speaking of trash, Finn Balor. It's all I really need to say, but I will expand upon that just a little bit. Finn Balor goes up to Kurt Angle and announces that he wants to be in this year's Royal Rumble, to which I opined on Twitter that it's no surprise that Finn Balor would love nothing more than to go over 29 other men. And even in an over-the-top row battle royal, too. Finny the Twinks in the Royal Rumble. ha! And then we've got a six-man tag, Elias and... Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, whatever the hell. Why couldn't Bo Dallas use the cowbell more? That's, that's all I'm saying. Now, I don't know what the hell Curtis Axel was wearing. I don't know what he was really singing. Why do we have to keep cutting off these performances? All for the freaking ball jobbers and Finny the Twink. Oh my god! Two sweet season is this, this young buck suck it, motherfuckers! Vince has pulled the ultimate troll on you before Wrestle Kingdom 12 on Thursday, January 4th. Because he had three members of the Bullet Club do the two sweet in the ring together. Oh, who gives a shit? Some overrated ass crap for some overrated ass talents. In a match I couldn't get over soon enough, because at this point in time, who freaking cared? And if you still happen to care by this point in time in the show... I'm pretty sure the closing segment with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, and then eventually Kane, took care of any remaining fucks to give for this week. Paul Heyman cuts the same promo that he's cut for the past several years. We're supposed to pretend like it's often, but at some point in time, I'll mix the shit up just a little bit, Junior. That's all I'm saying. But then Kane comes out after earlier in the night trying to get Braun Strowman to align with him so they can take out Lesnar. Here comes Kane and we're going to get a showdown. Oh, look at that. He chokes slams Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's going to sit up. He laughs and says, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. I get about $5 million a year to do dumb shit like this. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. I'm laughing now because they literally have no other ideas for anything to do with me in this company. Hence, they have me working with Kane in a title program heading into a big four pay-per-view in 2018. <laughs> Whatever. That's your half-ass review of a half-ass Raw. If there is one positive, and one positive, is that... Until when you smart asses opine in the comments section, oh, wait for a couple months and he'll lose interest. The Schleg Daddy is back! Reviewing Raw, baby! And we're at least gonna make it through to WrestleMania. After that, no promises, no guarantees, but keep hope alive, dammit! <laughs>